So who needs a stuffed pumpkin? I mean, who needs a stuffed turkey? That isn't that as a beautiful of a centerpiece as a bird ever could be? So you'll get to try the stuffing in here in a little bit. Um, but it's in here, the pumpkin is hot, the stuffing is hot, and it was all put together. And then you just garnish it with grapes and you know you can put these little things around it on your table and just really make it, you know, the center. Okay, Dr. Roma, talk to us a little bit about. Okay, vamos a hablar. We're going to be talking. Uh, I'm going to be back and forth. Okay, in English. Wow. Or even in English and Spanish. Uh, el tópico a hablar is overeating. Okay? Do you think that we eat more than what we need? ¿Ustedes creen que comemos más de lo que necesitamos? Sí. Okay. Uh, What is the problem of overeating? Yeah. Aside of getting obese, what is the other problem of overeating? Mm -hmm. Aparte de este, uh, ponernos gorditos. Okay. Uh, overworked the stomach. Uh, okay, the stomach overworks, yes. But one thing that, una de las cosas que hacen el sobre el comer, el dicen ellos, es que nuestro estómago trabaja más. But it's not only the stomach. It's the liver, it's the pancreas, okay, and the whole intestine, okay? And, and if we overeat, we will have other problems. Si comemos de más, vamos a tener otros problemas. Uno de los problemas, They already mentioned if we overeat, we will get obese. We will have problems with cholesterol, they say. But the main problem of overeating, especially because we don't eat, what, is this, what are the things that we normally overeat? ¿Cuáles son las cosas que normalmente eh, comemos de más? ¿Los vegetales? ¿Qué cosa es? ¿Los dulces o los qué? Normally, will serve yourself one or two times more the things that you like, isn't that? But the vegetable, for example, the salad, you don't say, please bring another salad. ¿Qué es lo que generalmente hacemos? We will ask, for example, if you were eating beef, you will ask for a piece of like beef again, chicken, another piece of chicken, probably another piece of uh, fish that you would eat. Some things that normally are fattening. Aside from high protein, they are very fattening. And you already said, it. Nos haga, generalmente lo que vamos a comer es cosas que son productos grasosos, muy dulces, okay, que van a producir exceso de trabajo en nuestro organismo, like the pancreas, como el pancreas y el hígado. And the main problem of overeating is something that we already have mentioned before. This is called liver water. Fatty liver, okay? And fatty liver. And fatty liver will bring us to something that even if you don't drink alcohol, you can later on the road. What is that? Liver and See, sí, you don't need to be drinking alcohol. You don't need to be an alcoholic, and you can have liver cirrhosis. Because you what? Overeat. Because of overeating, el sobrecomer te va a llevar a un problema que se llama hígado graso y posteriormente a desarrollar algo que se llama cirrosis hepática. No necesitas. Ahora, si te veo anteriormente, tienes cirro, eh, hígado graso y en dado caso te llega a dar hepatitis, probablemente de esa hepatitis A, ah, una hepatitis sencilla, ¿qué pasa? Con eso será suficiente para desarrollar la cirrosis. ¿Por qué? Porque se inflamó el hígado, se dañó y como ya estaba todo grasoso, no podía trabajar bien, entonces esa persona puede determinar en cirrosis. Y no era alcohólica. ¿Sí? No era alcohólica. Entonces, ustedes ven que el sobrecomer, esos son los problemas mayores. Ahora, un problema común es el sobrecomer. Sobre todo, when is the time that you have, or when do you see, and really say, now I have time to eat? 
¿Cuándo es? En la noche. Y en la noche es cuando comes bastante y luego después de comer, ¿qué haces? No, no te duermes. Vas y te sientes en el televisor. See, you go and sit in the front of the TV, watching your novela, probably, yeah. or the news, whatever you're going to be watching, but you will see, or you full stomach, and, oh, I cannot even bed myself because I'm full. And you're watching the TV. And that probably happened around 9 p.m., let's go do it like that. You ate early, around 9, you finished already. Okay? And what time do you go to sleep? Y qué se van a dormir? A las 11. ¿El estómago ya está vacío? Ok, el estómago no está vacío. El estómago no está empty cuando you eat. Normally, remember, it takes between 4 to 6 hours to be empty. So, if you finish eating at 6, it will be empty about what time? Around 10. 10 to 12. So, at that time, you will be able to go to sleep without any problem. Almost empty stomach. So you will not have any problem when you go to lay, go lay down. Something that is, algo que es muy común después de comer en la noche, es que cosa? Ah, sangriura, indigestion, ok? Heartburn, ok? Y luego le decimos al doctor, deme por favor una pastillita, give me please a prescription that you will take my heartburn. And it's very expensive if you don't have insurance. Or you can go to the water and buy a lot of hard food medications over there. And you can choose. And they make it, no, because it's needed. They make it because they know that we are very stubborn and will be continue doing what is not right and eating late when we will be having problems. So over eating, even if you just eat small, or when you eat a lot, especially dinner time, because it's the biggest meal that you have. So you have heartburn. Okay, and that heartburn with a long time of process and it's related with what? Cancer on the top of it. Okay, it's related with cancer on the top of it. As well, when you have heartburn, could you sleep well? You see? Do you feel rested the next day? You don't feel rest. No se, no se descansa cuando uno come mucho durante la noche. Al otro día se levanta y dice, ay, ¿cómo quisiera desayunar ahorita? ¿Verdad? ¿Así se levanta uno? No, you don't feel like really wanted to go and have breakfast. Because your stomach and your liver didn't rest, your all intestines did not rest. So you don't look forward for breakfast. So what you do? You skip. Then you skip breakfast and you continue. Probably what you need is just to wake you up and make you better, drink coffee, and you move on. So you need to cut? Yes. Okay. Is, it, is it a good time to cut? Yeah, it's time to cut. If you want to be. Okay, vamos a dejarlo aquí. Piensen en algunas de las cosas. We will stop over here, but think of something about questions and things that we can do and what other problems we can be affected. And we will be doing more demonstrations. We will be talking in this way. Um, so now what we're going to do is make a gravy. Ahora vamos a hacer un, un gravy. It's hard to make a gravy uh, without using the blood of the animal. That's traditionally where you get all the flavor from. Es difícil hacer un gravy sin utilizar la sangre del animal. But it's not as hard as you might think. Pero no es tan difícil. So, now it's, uh, I'm taking more liberties. You know, I used to be a, I, I was a, the director of a culinary arts program up in, uh, near Boston, a place called Atlantic Union College. Fue director de la cocina en el colegio en Boston. And we told him the difference between a chef and a cook was that a cook followed recipes and a chef made the recipes. Y que la diferencia entre un cocinero y un chef, ¿ok? Un cocinero sigue la receta. So chef so el chef hace su propia receta. Chefs understood um, what ingredients do, and so you can, uh, you, you know, you can feel free to substitute some ingredients or add other ingredients. 
Pueden sustituir, pueden agregar ingredientes como, eh, como chef. So I'm taking some of those liberties today. Así que estás tomando una, esas libertades hoy. But you have to be careful when you substitute. Um, today I'm substituting cashew for almonds. Estás sustituyendo el cashew por el, eh, las almendras. The reason why you can do that is because both of these are a bland nut. They don't really have a strong flavor of their own. Porque generalmente estos dos tipos de nueces no tienen un olor o sabor fuerte. So, um, I would not uh, substitute peanuts. That's no not a good No vas a por ejemplo, el cacahuate. ¿no? Es difícil. Because although you can get it to look correctly, it'll taste and smell like peanut butter. Okay, porque al momento que ustedes le pongan va a parecer el mismo crazy, pero va a saber qué cosa. So this one's pretty easy. It's pretty uh, simple. You just put in the ingredients. Chicken base, onion and garlic. Nutritional yeast. Does everybody know what nutritional yeast is? Levadura nutricional. Nutritional yeast is not the same yeast that you would put in your bread to make your rice. Para levantar el pan. Este es una levadura nutricional. I buy it in bulk and put it in a big bucket. So, uh, bread yeast, yeast that you would use to make bread with is um, kind of a tannish, grayish color. This is uh, very yellow. This is a very high in B12, which uh, vegetarians have a hard time getting. Bragg's aminos is just another word for soy sauce. <coughs> that Bragg's aminos is the one that is um, non-fermented. Esta sería salsa de soya pero no fermentada. Entonces no se le llama salsa de soya, se le llama Bragg's aminos, que es eh, la salsa de soya pero antes de ser fermentada. Now, um, now I'm going to put in some cornstarch. Ahora le pongo un poquito de Now I'm supposed to add in all this water, um, but I'm only going to put, put in part of the water because I want to shorten my mix time. It's important that you have a high speed blender when you do this. Um, you can get the regular one from Walmart or from Kmart or from Target. Um, and they really don't have the revolutions as some of these uh, more uh, industrial ones. This is a blend check. It's uh, equal to maybe a Vitamix. If you ever heard of a Vitamix, you'll see a Vitamix. Esta licuadora es de alta velocidad. Generalmente Walmart ahorita parece que está sacando una imitación alrededor de 100 dólares, pero no es lo mismo. Hay otra, esta se llama blend check. Hay otra que se llama Vitamix. Estas van a una revolución demasiado rápido que cortan, licuan, mezclan, hasta muchas cosas diferentes. Cuando sale el líquido de ahí sale caliente. I'm not sure of the RPMs. I know that it's way up there. I would have to look at it. It's around 2,500. 2,500 RPMs. And the difference is you're going to see a shorter mix time, a shorter blend time. And you want to get it very creamy. You don't want the nuts granular. That's very important when you're making salad dressings or cheese sauces, or in this case, gravy. Necesitan que se corte de licue completamente el grano, que no quede así grumoso, sino bien licuado como crema, cremoso, para que quede como si fuera un realmente un gravy. And so the other difference you're going to find is is if you start getting into the vegetarian lifestyle, you'll start using your blender more and more. And those little $35, $40 blenders at Walmart are not going to last you very long because you're going to be making more smoothies and, and blending up ice cubes and you're going to be doing more nuts. And so you're going to be using it a little bit more and, and those things won't hold up for very long. I know I've been, those end up being more, these are kind of expensive, but you'll go through 10 of the other ones in a year and this one should last you four or five years. Well, more than, yeah, five. I know I've had this one, 
I've had this one. It counts how many times I've used it. And I've, um, esto me indica principalmente cuánto lo he usado. Y esto me muestra que lo he usado 532 veces. I think I've, I've had it almost a year. Yo la tengo por cerca de un año. 525 times I've used it. So I use it a lot. Of course, you probably won't be doing coaching classes. 